Welcome back everyone to another training week. You're watching the week of April 3rd. Where the weekly focus was to continue building my all around endurance and change up my work on the single pommel, uh, over on pommel horse. What I've done with my single pommel uh, plan instead of doing single pommel circles on the very low single pommel mushroom i've gone and uh, took one of the handles off of one of our bucks and this buck sits uh, probably about 70 centimeters or so off the floor um, and it needs a weight to be held down because it uh, bobs to the side quite a bit especially if you're a, if you're an older gymnast and you're about to see it here so I got the 25 kilo weight on the other side of the buck. And what this does is it lets my legs uh, slouch downwards a little bit. And when I don't have to focus so much on being extended, it makes it easier to get my right hand on the pommel. So I thought surely I'd be able to do more circles in a row on a high buck compared to a, a low single pommel. And I started off just, uh, you know, pretty slowly, not pushing it too hard. And after a week off, I can proudly say I am at 11 single pommel circles. And you'll probably see that in the next training week. This week's Peter Nichols method had me at 30 and 10, which I think is pretty much the same as, as last week's, if not worse. So I may have taken a step backwards There you see the planche getting a little bit stronger. All this work for an A part on rings. Those of you might not know, planche got uh, reduced from a B strength hold to an A strength hold. But I'm doing it uh, because of not only just the hype surrounding planche in the calisthenics world these days, but uh, I think I've said in the past, I notice it helps me on P bars, it helps me a little bit on pommel. Though at the same time, if I'm growing too big, pommel horse is gonna be extremely difficult for me. It's already extremely difficult for me. So back to the single pommel work, I thought rather than just doing one at a time, sometimes if I get lucky two at a time, um, if I can get to around five, 10 circles, I'd be spending a lot more time just getting that hand placement, getting more repetitions. And I think that would be more beneficial and help me to make doing my pommel horse routine easier. Cause it's those step ups, it's the Magya and the step up after the Savado, which is really difficult uh, for me to get consistently of course I'm circling on the bent arm so it's using a lot of strength so if I'm a little bit more efficient in how I put my hand on the single pommel it'll save me a lot of energy in the long run as well so I think now we're sitting at four weeks or so left remaining Today is Sunday, I'm coming to you from Christchurch. We're here at the annual CSG Classic competition. Um, and the boys, the senior boys have just finished both days of competing. All in all, it was, it was quite, quite positive. We had our first domestic comp of the year. And uh, compared to seasons of the past, I think collectively, the TriStar Mag program is in better shape than we've been in the past. Especially considering that in the past years we had we had COVID and lots of time off with that. So it's been good to have a proper build up for season. And uh, from what I've seen, the boys seem pretty happy where they are as well. There's always problems. There's always unfinished business. But in this sport, I think uh, even when you're in your 
peak condition, there's always things that pop up here and there. That's what it's all about. Otherwise it would be too easy. So after my Zoli men took a step back, I thought I'd better do a few extra reps on the, on the Monday session to see what exactly it was that was going wrong. And in the end, I was unwinding from the Zoli men at, a, at the wrong time. So anybody that wants to learn Zoli men, um, it's not actually that difficult. And I think the way that I learned it where I was just doing back prize Higgins into a one-arm swing is the easiest way, the most comfortable way to learn it. Going straight away from front giants, doing a 360 with a, with a mat being pushed up and stopping at the bottom, you kind of have no in-between step. I mean, I guess you could get the mat less and less pushed into you when you swing through the bottom but uh, I just found it so easy to learn, just getting the Higgins higher and higher and higher. When I was doing Higgins, which is that half turn from over grip, you do a half turn backwards, swing down in a single arm L grip and unwind at the bottom. Uh, once I did that from handstand, I felt quite comfortable just to go from the front giant straight away. So all to say that when you unwind of the Zoli Min, there's a very precise timing that, that it has to happen. And it's when the bar has started to be pulled down from your body weight through the bottom. If you unwind too early, you won't get the, the 360, the, the twist won't work. If you unwind too late, you get pulled over the bar and you don't finish the twist on time. So the unwind through the bottom has to start as you hit the pressure, uh, as you pull the bar down. Another step I'm gonna have to take, uh, which actually I took on Thursday, is to put this double back full twist uh, on the floor without a 10 centimeter mat. In the long distant past, I had done double Arabian half out when I was young, but uh, Double back full twist is quite different. I think it's uh, it's it's more difficult, but it does set you up for a, for a double double better than a double Arabian half. So I put it onto the floor with a uh, with no mats on Thursday, just uh, just a few days ago. It was a little bit sketch, a little bit of a low landing, but safe nonetheless. And I'm gonna need a few more. Uh, repetitions, maybe another couple of weeks of doing some extra layout punch front tucks or ideally layout punch double fronts with a open double back uh, coming back onto the floor. Just that one extra tumble at the start changes the entire second tumble. Um, you're a little bit dizzy, or at least I in my old age get a little bit dizzy after the first tumble. I'm used to just doing a simple double back, which you, you you know you don't even really have to think about that. Once you once you have the double back, it's very easy. But double back full twist for a mere one tenth uh, upgrade is actually quite a big step, especially doing a full out where you stay open the whole time. It's a uh, it's closer to a double layout than it is to an actual tuck. So again, is it worth me risking it for point one? Probably not, but somehow I feel inside of my spirit, I want to do it. So I play it uh, wise in some places, like just doing a nice and simple rings routine. Although I am scheming to try out both Yamawakis, uh, the, the pike and the tuck. So we'll see how that goes. but. Uh, not doing the inverted cross obviously which for one is not going to get paid not even close and then i'll have a bunch of execution deductions but you got to let a gymnast play you know i'm quite enjoying finding little little places in my otherwise quite serious instructed training day 
where I can just have a little bit of play with something new, like that, like that back of prize invert. Even if it's just a single turn of me trying to do it, it adds adds quite a bit of value into my training. I've been quite keen to try the Yuchenko two and a halfs, but ever since uh, my wrist started hurting, obviously I've uh, I've been doing minimum volt, just one or two double twists and uh, calling it there. Yeah, so after I gave my uh, my wrist a rest last week, the pain has subsided a bit. It's still there. Uh, but I've had another four days off now with uh, with CSG, so I'm hoping that I've given it some time to recover and I can continue doing routines after I after I return. By the way, I forgot to mention at the end of this week uh, we did a mock competition with a couple of the Oceania boys and our Oceania coach David Colvin came up from Christchurch to to be there for it all and big shout out to our Oceania coach David uh, always always coming up and to see how we're going making the connection so that once we're at the big event we're already very familiar with each other and we're very familiar with all of the sadness that we've experienced in the gym it's the hard times that brings people together and now that I mentioned hard times, I'm reminded that last week's training week was called suffering. And suffering indeed it was. Yet, uh, I feel, while well, looking at this, I'm assuming this is Tuesday. No giant D on this time, but uh, I think from this week onwards, my all around fitness starts to feel better. Now here I took out the studs to protect my wrist. And actually I added two skills. I'm not sure if I did, did I do the Healy? No, I think I was exhausted here. Yeah, I was just like, no way I'm gonna break my hand or break my fingers or do something. So better, better take a little breather before sending the Healy. Yeah, I was tired. And that's really the the suffering part of it, you know. Skills that otherwise are very easy. Being put in a position where you're so exhausted uh, after doing all six, or in this case only four Pradas before Piba, that even the simple things, they become not only difficult, but they become dangerous. And you are fully, fully aware that you're risking injury. And, uh, you know, the truth is that you have to take that risk. Now, here you can see that the fitness is coming along because I caught uh, a casino during the six set, but here I tore a new hole in my ass. I landed on one butt cheek while traveling forwards at a high speed. And as you can imagine, what happens when you land on one sideways traveling forwards it all just gets ripped apart <laughs> and I, I felt it I felt it there's a lot of phrases that I could say right now but I'm gonna keep it PG so I probably could have caught the the one that I did after that as well um, but not yet so and then everything started getting thrown off timing was a bit off but the pipe catcher was back in there. Question is, did I make it all the way through? Now I have to, uh, I have to speak for a little bit about this mock comp because I discovered something new about myself and I surprised myself. At the end of this week, I started feeling a bit sick 
um, the folks, uh, my whole family back home was, was a bit sick and I was definitely coming down with something. So we had the mock comp full ouchies. That was better. We had the mock comp on the Saturday and uh, the way I was feeling on the Friday, I knew that there's a slim to none chance that, oy oy oy. Yeah, I must have been already feeling something here, but that was just, see now that was just dangerous. Problem is that was the first step practice and it wasn't even on the floor, it was on a, a resi. And now you see I started getting a bit nervous making that twist earlier just to make sure I didn't twist into the ground. So self-protection starts to take over, but what are you gonna do? You know, if you want something, you gotta you gotta get out, get after it. And uh, at least it was over the over the resi pit, so you can take a much much harder landing in the resi. There we go. How many did I do today? It's already starting to look a little bit more fluid, a bit more smooth. If you pay attention to that right elbow right there though. Man, anymore and I'm like in a half dip. But anyway, back to the mock competition. The the way I was feeling on Friday, I could tell that uh, it could go both ways, like, but unlikely. You know, when you're feeling a little bit off on the first day and you think like, oh, I'll be better tomorrow, but then you wake up and you just feel horrible the next day. That was my situation on the Saturday morning. So I just wasn't feeling the greatest. There wasn't anything uh, like, I wasn't coughing it up a storm. I just had a, you know, my head wasn't feeling good. I had a little bit of an itchy throat, but nothing, uh, nothing too major, but of course, once you start running around in the warm-ups and everything starts to burn and you start to sweat really easily, you know something's wrong. There we have the first double doubles over the hard rings for the 2023 year slash season. So we all grabbed the coffee together, um, chatted, chatted a bit amongst the Oceania squad went into the gym, uh, started warm up and shortly after I finished warm up, I kind of said to myself, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything. This is, this is dangerous. I don't feel good. Much like I didn't feel good over there. And I thought I'd just spend some time uh, working on the, on the single pommel. So I was working on the single pommel while uh, Sam and Daniel were warming up all six. It was a structured mock comp. We warmed up all six, 10 minutes each, and then one touch present was the plan. Hey, we have what? The third one of the year? Third spaz out of the year. I need to keep tabs on these. I should number them. Not Coleman 100, spaz 100. How long is it gonna take to get to 100? Let us know down in the comments. So where was I? The boys were warming up in their 10 minute warm up and I was just doing my single pommel circles. I went and did my normal warm up sequence on P-Bar, so just a couple of peaches to support, a couple of swings to handstand in the back layout. Did my half turns and my taps on high bar and then went to floor. Had the idea on floor that, well, obviously if my whole body burns just to just to do a little run around the floor and warm up um and you're about to see all of what i'm explaining uh, come up on the saturday if it burns then doing a whole floor routine is just gonna demolish me and i might be out for a whole week who knows but maybe if i just do like two or three tumbles uh and put that double back full twist in second onto the resi that might be something valuable so I think we're about to start the mock comp here. So I just did the three minute warm up on floor because there was really only one uh, difficult thing I had to do, which was the double back full. And the adrenaline kicked in and I was like, <clears throat> I was like, whoa. The double back full was, was on a low mat, but uh, technically I, I was quite happy with how it went. 
And I decided to do my press sequence and finish off with a dismount. So we're leaving out the proper first tumble and then the whip two and a half and the one and a half full. So just some something a bit shorter so I don't elevate the heart rate too much. And I felt this uh, quite a substantial adrenaline um, going on, which is which is quite rare. I mean, there was uh, Coach David, uh, Sam, and Daniel. So there was only three three gymnasts, one coach, four people total in the gym. So I was like, okay, I'll keep it going. I'll do uh, my scissor B Savado, and then I'll come up and try a stop lead check dismount. And when I got there, I thought, you know what? How about I just combine all that into one one chunk and just leave out the Magia Savado. And you see that uh, obviously the dismount didn't go up properly, but again I was really surprised with uh, how my body was was delivering, delivering the goods when it counted. So I thought, okay, this this is seeming to work. Leave out like a middle chunk of the routine, but do the start and the ending bits. So all I left out on rings were the two giants, and this felt easy. I was really happy with that. I decided not to push vault to save my wrist, but at this stage I was like, wow, I'm actually feeling like, like I can, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I didn't feel good in, in my head and in my body, but once I presented uh, without warming up much, I was doing some good stuff. Where I surprised myself was P-bar, high-bar. I pretty much did my full routines and all I had done was my warm-up sequence and just a wee little one-touch warm-up before presenting. Bit of a mess there, but fifth apparatus and not feeling too well. Did I do the Healy or not? Just a dull pike. But to make that entire chunk, I was really surprised. So here's my one touch. Took it a little bit far. Um, and that was my first release of the day. I hadn't touched high bar in about two hours from the 10 minute warm ups, and then was able to warm up with a casino. And then caught the casino. Now again, you could also argue, well, there's like a bit of a psychological element when you know you're sick, so it doesn't really matter uh, whether you mess up or not. So take some of the pressure off. But thinking back, uh, I actually felt quite a, like I was in a competition environment. So I was, if I was feeling this good while being uh, a bit unwell, imagine the Oceania energy, it's gonna be over the roof. So there you have it, a really positive mock comp experience, um, doing more than I thought I could do with an invert at the end. Thanks for watching, till next time.